Do we have any idea how much Russian money there is sloshing around here in the UK? We've got some estimates of the dirty money, um, money that are the proceeds of corruption or other illicit money, and it's estimated, estimated by the National Crime Agency to be around 100 billion a year in total, of which possibly a quarter is from Russia. Goodness, a quarter is from Russia? Yeah. And where are the other sources of this sort of money? They're multifarious around the world. I mean, we've tracked property in London bought by dirty money from uh, Azerbaijan, Nigeria, Pakistan, pretty much all over. But Russia is a particular sort of hotspot in terms of London. Now, the risk of, without libeling any particular financial institutions, where, where are the conduits in, into the city from? How does this money get here? The major banks are conduits, as you'd expect, but what's interesting is by the time it gets to London, it's sometimes whizzed all around the world through multiple financial centres, and particularly complicit are the UK's overseas territories like the British Virgin Islands and the Crown Dependencies, places like the Isle of Man and Jersey and so on, um, because it's so easy to get money through there uh, and hide it. And that's despite various drives by various governments to increase transparency in some of these Crown Dependencies. Yeah, I mean, the government's talked a sort of um, uh, a, a difficult game on this, that they're aware that those centres depend on um, uh, large financial flows, and so they haven't put as much pressure on them as they might to clean up their act. They don't operate to the standards you see in London on transparency, for example. What do, how does London shape up compared with other major financial centres around the world, the likes of Hong Kong, Singapore, New York? There are around half a dozen centres, including the ones you mentioned, which are real um, focal points for dirty money flowing around the world. Uh, London has certain advantages. Um, Russians have always found London particularly attractive, and other um, jurisdictions will attract others. So uh, uh, China will go particularly for Hong Kong, as you'd expect. Um, Indian money often, often goes to Dubai. Uh, but Russia uh, has often come to London. London has certain advantages. It has these historic links with the Crown Dependencies and Overseas Territories, so it's very easy to be part of that sort of global laundering system. It's also a huge market in itself, so if you want to hide the dirty money, it's easier to do amongst all the clean money. What, when we talk about this term dirty money, what do we mean by that? Money that has been illicitly procured? Yeah, so um, it could be the proceeds of organised crime uh, or the proceeds of uh, corruption. Uh, if you pay a bribe um, of £10 million to get a contract, where do you want to keep the £10 million? Probably not in Russia. You park it in a house in Kensington. Right, right. And, I mean, you mentioned that you alluded to this a moment ago. I mean, just how did London become such a playground for wealthy Russians? I mean, this wasn't an accident. No, I mean, partly I think the UK has uh, deliberately courted foreign money and certainly after the financial crisis, for example, there was uh, a visa regime where if you pitched up with one or two million pounds, you could simply buy a visa called an investment visa um, with no questions asked. Now, they've yes. tightened up that system, but uh, there are thousands of people who got through and have never been checked properly. Worth pointing out, other countries do this. I mean, the Portuguese are uh, quite keen on uh, that sort of uh, setup as well, aren't they? Other countries certainly do it, and in Portugal's case, for example, Angola with the historic links, uh, often that money often goes to Portugal. But London has been a particular magnet because of its size, the luxury goods it provides, the, the private education, the PR agencies that can launder your reputation.